Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we're just going to finish off the last question on 1.4 before we start the next section, 1.5. Um, I just had to add two distances together. Uh, remember, we'll just do a quick overview. The ball drops eight times, um, and I'll show you a diagram of that as well. Then it goes up seven times. If we were looking for the total, ver total vertical distance the ball has traveled when it hits the ground for the eighth time. So to get that, we would just subtract the first off because the sum of the seven, the sum of the eight, the only difference is going to be that first uh, fall of 100 uh, meters, which only occurs for the uh, downward once. That, that doesn't happen upward. And then when we get to two distances, we simply add them together and we get 732. Uh, and there's the homework um, that we have. So homework is there. Um, that's four sections, one decimal four. Page 53, 1 to 8, 10, 17, and 19. Um, so now we're on 1.5, uh, infinite geometric series. So what is an infinite sequence? It's a list of numbers that goes to infinity. Um, so it's T1, T2, T3, and so on. Again, that is going to infinity. So we basically, for an infinite, infinite geometric uh, series, uh, we would add the numbers together, obviously, and our last term would be uh, represented by t to infinity, the subscript um, infinity. No sequences can be arithmetic, geometric, or others. We have to remember that, right? So we always have to check. So let's look at the first example. So the first example says, well, the sequence defined by tn equals 1 minus 2 over n lists the first six terms. So basically, you're just plugging the numbers in, right? Um, I'll do an example calculation. I'm not going to do them all. So um, I'll rewrite the formula. So we have uh, t to the n is equal to 1 minus a fraction 2 over n. And that's t to the n, right? So we're going to um, take this formula. And it's literally just like if we had a table of values and you're plugging in the first six values. You're going to put T1 in, and you're just going to keep calculating. So it'll generate the, um, the, the numbers in the sequence, right? So we recap our, our formula. We put in T1, and T1, whenever we see N, we put 1 in. So this is simply equal to 1 minus 2, which is equal to negative 1. So the first term in the sequence is going to be negative 1. And you would continue to do this um, to get the rest of the terms. Um, the next one's 0, obviously. I'll show you. But if I wanted to get if I wanted to get t2, I would put in n for 2, which would equal 1 minus 1, which would equal 0. So there's the first two terms. And I'll do the third one, and then the next I'll just re I'll write out because it's, it's literally the same thing each time, right? So T3 is equal to, now this time we get into fractions, which is fine. So 1 subtract 2 thirds is the same as... Three thirds, because it's equivalent to one minus two thirds, and again, I know I don't need to show this for everyone, but um, I'll show it this once, and that will give us the answer of obviously one. Third. So we continue to do that to generate the first six terms. So we know the first one was negative one, negative one. Answer the equation: negative one. I like the numbers zero. And then we're going to get some fractions happening here. So we got one third. The next one, we'll just do that quickly in our heads. If we put a four in for n, that would be two fourths, which would be one half. Be one subtract one half. So the answer would be indeed one half. Do the next one. Put five in. Right. If we put five in for n, we'd have one subtract two fifths, which is three fifths.
three fifths, and then we put six in. We have one subtract two six, which is one subtract one third, which would be two thirds. So those are the first six terms in the in the sequence uh, given there using the uh, formula, right? Next, it says what is the one hundredth term? So we're going to put in one hundred here. So we'll put in. T to the 100 is equal to 1 minus 2 over 100, which is the same as 100 over 100. Um, if you want me to show that again, you don't have to show that if you understand that 1 is equivalent to 100 over 100 um, minus 2 over 100 which is obviously equal to 98 over 100, which can be simplified by 249.50 by numerator and denominator by 2. So there's your answer, 49 over, and then the thousands term is the same idea. Um, I'm going to copy and paste this because it's going to be very similar. And I like to be, there we go, 1,000. So this denominator would be 1,000. That would be 1,000 over 1,000, which minus 2 over 1,000, which would be 998, which would be 499 over 500. All right. So this is the important part, if you ask me, is the rest of it is plug numbers in the formula. What do you notice? as the uh, n value increases. This is getting closer and closer and closer to 1. Um, it's obviously not going to reach 1, and you'll learn more about this in Calculus 12 once you get there. So as n increases, the term gets closer, I should say the value of the term gets closer and closer to 1, right? You can put 10,000 in, so it would be 2 over 10,000, which would be 9,988 no, 9, over 10,000, which would be 499, or 4,999 over 5,000. So it will increase closer and closer and closer to 1. So now let's look at an infinite series. So infinite series, it says determine the following sums for the given series. So let's write down the information that we have. We look at our, our formula, so we can put that anywhere you wish. Um, so we, what do we know? We know T1. T1 is equal to 48. And we also know the D, or not D, sorry, R. We're in geometric here. Um, well, it could be. We'd have to take a look at it, right? But you can clearly see that you're dividing by 3 each time. So the R value is equal to 1 third. 16 divided by 40 is third. Or you can see it, clearly see that you're dividing. So it's either dividing by 3 or the same as multiplying by a third. Now we're going to do the sum formulas. So I'm going to go get the sum formula for us. We need the one that has the first term and the R value and N, because we know N is 5, 10, 50 here. So we're going to go get that formula from the previous example. It's here somewhere. There it is. Perfect. Sorry about that. So there's a formula. We're going to plug in what we know. We'll go, uh, I'm going to go horizontal this time. Plug in what we know. Right. So the first term is 48. R is one third. So we have to switch that there to. Oh. We'll switch that to a fraction. 
And that fraction is going to be raised to the power of n. Well, the fraction is one third. Again, this is where I like to use the fractions, not the decimal, because the decimal would be an approximation because uh, it's a third, right? So it's decimal three repeated. So definitely do not use um, the fraction here. Please use, uh, or sorry, don't use the decimal. Use the fraction instead, all right? I'll get one third minus one in the bottom. So let's clean that up a bit. Um, and we get one fifth to the power of five would be one over 243, right? Because it's three to the power of five. That's gone. So we're just left with one over 243. In the meantime, why don't we take this one and we switch that to a fraction as well to get a common denominator to be 243 over 243. So it was one. And then the denominator is going to be negative. So one third subtract one would be negative two thirds. Which equals forty eight. So what I'll do is I'll take the 48 and I'll divide it by negative 2 thirds. So 48 divided by negative 2 thirds is the same as multiplying by um, negative 3 over 2, which would end up being 72. And of course that value is negative, negative 72. So I took the 48 and I divided it by the negative there and then that's going to be multiplied by so I'm going to insert my brackets, and that's going to be multiplied by negative 242 over uh, 243, right? Put a subtract numerator. Remember, I multiplied there, and I get that is equal to, and a negative times a negative is obviously going to give you a positive. So the answer is going to be, it's going to be, we'll leave it in fraction form, not that it matters. You can change it to a decimal, it's up to you. So we end up positive, because negative times negative is positive. You get 34,848 over 486, which is equal to approximately 1.5. And you can change that to a decimal just for, uh, for now. That's going to equal 71 decimal 7073 and so on. All right. And again, you don't have to show all that work, but this is the number you want to get to. Okay. Um, I'm not going to continue now. The, um, our time limit's almost up, so in the next video we will continue with the, this example and finish it up. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you again soon.